Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. You are an oppressor as you are a man. It's my time now and I'll have fun out of our marriage. Dear listeners, today we bring the story of a woman who under a fake sense of feminism cheats on her husband and later divorces him, only to end up on the streets. Please show your support by hitting the subscribe button and share your thoughts on the story in the comment section. Let's start with the story. My wife, who recently started a new job and made some new friends, has been acting differently. These friends are quite different from our usual circle, leaning towards hardcore feminism and social justice warrior perspectives. Initially, I found it amusing, but over the last two months, things have taken a disturbing turn. We've been married for 11 years and have two kids, aged 10 and 8. Lately, my wife has been accusing me of things that seem nonsensical, attributing historical oppression to our relationship. Small gestures of love and care are suddenly turning into reasons for fights. I've tried to be patient, explaining that I haven't done anything wrong and the only thing I'm guilty of is loving her. About five weeks ago, my gut feeling intensified. She started coming home late without informing me, and on those nights, I couldn't reach her on the phone. She'd be distant, cold, and sometimes even drunk. The next day, she'd dismiss my concerns, calling me controlling and claiming I read too much into things. This pattern repeated a few times. I snooped in on her phone and found a thread with one of her new friends discussing how she planned to approach me about the idea of an open relationship. My suspicions about her infidelity seemed to be confirmed. She had scheduled this conversation for the 2nd of December. With the kids celebrating Christmas at their grandparents, we were supposed to join them later that day. As we sat down for breakfast, she casually brought up the topic of an open relationship, as if it were just a random thought. Fortunately, I was prepared, I had been reading advice on similar situations and had started recording. I knew from what I had read that there might not be a way to salvage the relationship at this point. My main focus became protecting myself and the kids, salvaging some pride and self-esteem. Instead of yelling or screaming, I switched to a jaw-clenched interrogation mode. It was time to gather information and understand the situation as best as possible. I can sense the tension escalating as my wife, initially confident, crumbles at the sight of my expression. I cut through the attempts to feign innocence, demanding honesty, in this conversation about our relationship. If you want to talk, don't treat me like an idiot, I assert. Be honest. If you lie now, there's no point in discussing anything. You've destroyed my trust. Frustration builds as I press for the truth, sensing there's more than she initially admitted. I make it clear that honesty is non-negotiable for any meaningful conversation to take place. The ultimatum hangs in the air, be truthful, or our marriage ends. The revelation unfolds, and she confesses to two one-night stands and plans to sleep with a colleague, asserting her right to do so without my control. Shocked, I delve into the details, seeking names, marital statuses, protection use anything to grasp the reality of the situation. As if that's not enough, she drops the bomb about setting me up with her friends, insinuating an open relationship, mirroring her colleague's purported situation. I have seen that friend, I would not touch that veil creature with a barge pole, let alone my pole. The absurdity of the proposal is not lost on me, and I vehemently reject the idea. I decide to investigate further. I ask for her phone, and she provides the pattern to unlock it. Seizing an opportunity when she steps away, I lock myself in my office and run recovery software on the phone, uncovering painful evidence of her actions in the past 30 minutes. Adding another layer, I install a spying app from an online service before emerging from my office. Handing her the phone, I instruct her to leave. She protests vehemently, accusing me of being controlling and holding her back, emphasizing that she has every right to pursue her actions. Throughout the confrontation, she displays no remorse, only defiance. Amidst her yelling, I maintain a stoic silence, refusing to engage in arguments. 
I pack her belongings while she circles, continuing her tirade. Eventually, I find myself at the front door, standing silently until she exhausts her verbal onslaught. As she leaves, I inform her that she's now single, free to do as she pleases, as I won't be controlling her anymore. The door slams shut, locking her out. Later, I witness her discussing the situation with her friends, her friends, instead of offering support or urging her to reconsider her actions, are fueling her determination. They tell her she's entitled to more, that she deserves better than me, and that my threats are empty. What's even more alarming is how they advise her to use false accusations of domestic abuse against me, citing their own experiences. In response, I've ordered cameras to document everything. The need for such measures is unsettling, as I've never posed any threat to her. To add to the shock, she's arranging meetings with her affair partner at a hotel. I felt compelled to intervene, so I tracked down the partner's wife, informed her of the ongoing affair, and shared details about their planned encounter. The fallout was intense. The wife confronted them at the hotel, capturing my wife getting dressed on video. It was a gut-wrenching sight that left me nauseated. In the midst of this chaos, I messaged my wife, expressing my knowledge of the situation and making it clear that I want no further contact with her. It's bewildering to witness her disconnect from reality, treating our divorce as some kind of competition. I can't comprehend the delusional mindset driving her actions. To ensure everyone is aware of the truth, I logged into her family WhatsApp group, announced our divorce due to her infidelity, and then disconnected from the group. I've received calls and messages from her side, but I haven't mustered the energy to engage with them. Instead, I reached out to my parents, laying bare the painful details of the situation. My father made it clear that my wife wouldn't be welcome for Christmas. I've had a conversation with my boss, and he's given me time off until mid-January to sort through the mess my life has become. As I try to make sense of everything, I find myself monitoring my wife's increasingly frantic discussions with her new friends. It's almost surreal to witness her clinging to these connections, seemingly oblivious to the fact that she's lost her family, her marriage is over, and these new relationships don't truly care about her. Her attempts to insert herself into our Christmas celebrations have been met with firm boundaries from my father, even the threat of involving the police if she doesn't leave. Meanwhile, I'm here, grappling with the emotional turmoil and the painful reality that my family has unraveled. The shock that initially enveloped me is giving way to intense pain. Reading their chats, interacting with her messages, it all feels like a dagger to the heart. I've only responded to her twice, each time reinforcing that the person she has become isn't the wife I knew and loved. Explaining the situation to the kids was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Trying to find the right words to convey that their mom no longer wants to be a family, that she wants to be with other men, and that we're getting divorced, it's a conversation I never imagined having. The kids are naturally distraught, and I'm thankful my mom and dad are here to offer love and support. They're doing their best to shower the kids with affection while I'm an absolute mess. I know I need to pull myself together for the kids' sake, but going back to her is not an option. I wish I had waited until after Christmas to break the news to them, giving us a chance to start counseling right away. But when they asked about their mother's return, the truth just spilled out. I couldn't face myself if I went back to her. Her level of disrespect and callousness is unforgivable. I'm lost, struggling to understand why she thinks she can demand anything from me now. Is she mentally ill? It's a crazy, confusing ride. A lot has happened, and I've been a pathetic, sobbing mess. I became obsessed with reading my wife's chats with her friends, and the things she said were insane and hurtful. What really broke me was when she described our marriage and kids as burdens that prevented her from being a successful woman. According to her, I was an oppressive force holding her back. As I read and reread her words, I realized there were no details or examples of how we were burdens. In fact, I've supported her in every way financially, emotionally, 
and in pursuing her dreams. It's disheartening to see the reality distorted in such a hurtful way. Mike, Bob, and Frank, my lifelong buddies, have been my rock. Dad filled them in on everything, and they took charge, even preparing dinner while I was out of it. I broke down again, and it wasn't until Friday evening that I started coming back to myself. Mike, with his military background, connected me with his counselor via Zoom. Despite specializing in amputees, the counselor's insights into emotional recovery resonated with me. The analogy of the dead part of my identity being like phantom pain from a missing limb struck a chord. Hours of conversation with Mike have been steadily helping me improve. Bob, the quiet IT security executive, surprised me. He arranged a call with a lawyer from a top-notch firm, covering the costs without a second thought. His way of repaying me for the beatings he took on my behalf during our childhood speaks volumes about his character. Frank, the teacher with seven kids, has been a godsend for my children. His support ensures they're well taken care of while I navigate this tumultuous period. Yesterday was a hectic day, starting with an early morning STD screening after discovering an unpleasant surprise from my soon-to-be ex-wife. The revelation transformed my self-pity into anger, prompting a decision to fight for full custody. I decided not to give her anything if I can help it. In a surprising turn, the lawyer managed to track down the ex-husband of my wife's feminist friend who bragged about screwing him over. It turns out, it wasn't too difficult using court documents. The support from my dad and friends is giving me strength as I brace myself for the challenging journey ahead. Talking to the ex-husband of my wife's friend on WhatsApp was eye-opening. The harrowing details of what he went through painted a grim picture, and it hit me that I need to brace myself for a similar battle. Hearing about his struggles, homelessness, and limited access to his kids was heartbreaking. It gave me a glimpse of what my soon-to-be ex-wife might put me through. I recognize the disadvantages men often face in the court system, but I'm determined to fight with everything I have. I decided to take a proactive stance, gathering tons of evidence to strengthen my case. The lawyer suggested a preemptive strike, a restraining order based on her openly anti-male comments, especially for the sake of my son. Growing up in a household with such a negative parental figure is undoubtedly damaging. I gave the green light to the lawyers to proceed with the restraining order. She's expected to be served today. In the midst of all this, I had a bizarre Zoom call with her. It was surreal to see her trying to look her absolute best, something she hadn't done in years. Throughout the conversation, she attempted to bait me into a fight, but I managed to keep my cool. My lawyer emphasized the importance of attempting an amicable divorce before heading into a contested one. I was recording the meeting. Soon-to-be ex-wife didn't disappoint she started out with this absurd statement about how there are two types of penises, one that is roughly the same size whether it's erect or not and the other type that shrinks or grows based on whether it's erect or not. Who opens a call with her husband like that? Then she mused about how she was looking forward to the end of the current restrictions, so she could go out and investigate this, more in person. I simply responded that I wasn't interested in her hobbies, that I was only interested in discussing her divorce. Recording that conversation was a surreal experience. Her bizarre opening remarks and attempts to provoke anger left me baffled. When she muted herself to confer with her friends, openly cursing me for simply being a man, I couldn't shake the feeling that she saw our divorce as some twisted game, a power play where I had no option but to comply with her whims. Progress on the divorce front was non-existent, and I reluctantly concluded that a contested divorce was the only way forward. Adding to the chaos, I had to address the issue of chlamydia, a claim she dismissed with a frown. At this point, I've reached a state of not caring about her actions anymore. Sharing the recording with my lawyer shocked her, and it seems everyone involved thinks my soon-to-be ex-wife's behavior is beyond rationality. With access to her phone and chat logs, I'm prepared to present a strong case in court. The hurt is still there, but
but I've shifted my focus from self-pity to self-preservation. No more prisoners, I need to protect myself and my kids. I'm confident that my children will be fine, they'll get the therapy they need. As for my soon-to-be ex-wife, she'll become a distant memory, and I'm determined to start building a new and better life for myself and my kids. My wife has completely derailed, and it feels like the entire train is burning in a ditch. I don't understand what's wrong with her, she refuses to seek help for potential mental issues and acts like everything is normal. There's no remorse or regret in her behavior, and she portrays me as unreasonable for not accepting whatever she wants. She's hardly even talked to the kids since D-Day. I'm taking the necessary steps to divorce her and move forward with separating our lives. There's no turning back at this point. I wish it didn't have to come to this, and I find myself crying myself to sleep every night, mourning not only my own loss, but also the fact that my children will grow up in a broken home. What's even more heart-wrenching is that my children no longer have a functional relationship with their mother. How do you answer a child's question like, why doesn't mommy want to see me anymore? Doesn't she love me? I don't have the answer, and it's tearing me apart. Every day, I wake up thinking that my heart is already shattered into too many broken pieces to break anymore, only to be proven wrong all day, every day. My wife remains unaware that I can monitor her communications, or she doesn't care. She's convinced that I'll never leave her and that my reaction to her behavior is unjustified. Despite the restraining order, she continues to speak negatively about me, our marriage, and our children to her friends. I can't comprehend why she harbors such hatred when we haven't done any of the things she accuses us of. As I mentioned before, my lawyer secured a temporary restraining order against her. Yesterday, there was a hearing, and since there were no new direct threats, the order was not extended. The situation remains incredibly challenging, and I'm doing my best to navigate through the pain and uncertainty. The fact that my lawyer suggested using the fact that she knowingly infected me as leverage for an undisputed divorce is just another surreal layer to this nightmare. I never imagined I'd be in a position where I have to treat someone I used to love as an adversary, always expecting the worst. I'd be okay with her decision to leave if it weren't for the unnecessary adversarial process she's pushing. Why does she want to hurt the people who used to love her as much as possible in the process? It's baffling, and I'm desperately searching for any insight. The potential court scenario adds another layer of stress. Paying a lump sum for the house, uncertainty about alimony, and the hope for custody, it's a roller coaster of emotions. My lawyer's suggestion to aim for an amicable divorce is a beacon of hope in this tumultuous situation. The involvement of the ex husband who faced injustice in the court system is both heartbreaking and hopeful. The brokenness of the justice system, especially against fathers, is disheartening, but the potential for change with new evidence gives a glimmer of hope. The meeting with my lawyer and soon to be ex wife brought its own set of bizarre circumstances. Her tardiness, the absence of her lawyer, and the presence of a harpy friend added unexpected complications. Following my lawyer's strict instructions on how to behave, I can only hope for a smoother resolution and a step towards freedom. I'll keep updating as this tumultuous journey unfolds. In the midst of this surreal meeting, my lawyer laid down some ground rules, no negative reactions to insults, respond non-confrontationally, and maintain silence if she placed her hands flat on the table. The harpy friend and my soon-to-be ex-wife arrive late, sans masks, ready to provoke an insult. Their attempts at winding me up were relentless, and my lawyer tried to steer the discussion toward the divorce, but they seemed more interested in their own jokes and insults. Their laughter at my expense was cringeworthy, and I couldn't fathom what was happening. I maintained a mostly silent presence, occasionally responding with non-committal phrases. The absurdity reached its peak when my lawyer presented the proposed settlement for an amicable divorce. Offering a generous lump sum of $60,000 for the house equity and investments, my soon-to-be ex-wife eagerly wanted to sign immediately. Her excitement, prodded by the harpy duo, 
overshadowed any interest in reviewing the rest of the agreement. My lawyer, sensing something was amiss, made a quick call, and suddenly, there was a flurry of activity. Identity documents were requested, and we were asked to sign copies. The meeting took an unexpected turn, leaving me bewildered by the unfolding events. After the meeting, the notary stamped the agreement, and my lawyer, practically standing on the palm of her hand, thanked my soon-to-be ex-wife and the harpy. They left in haste, leaving the copy of the agreement on the table. Once they were out of sight, my lawyer congratulated me, emphasizing the unusual nature of this negotiated divorce session. She assured me that she would send my soon-to-be ex-wife's copy after a hearing in front of the judge or if she hired legal representation. On the surface, it seemed like I might have a smoother divorce than initially anticipated. My lawyer promised to call in every favor to expedite a hearing with the judge, likely through a video call. Following advice from Reddit, I had also hired a private investigator who provided photos of my wife with two different men at different bars and going to a hotel with one of them. My soon-to-be ex-wife had signed for full custody with only a one-time payment of $60,000, and I now needed to find the money. With a plan in place and support from Bob, who offered to front the entire amount if needed, I was on the path to freedom. Despite the progress, I couldn't shake the feeling of unreality, half expecting her to pull false accusations out of her hat. Following my lawyer's advice, I maintained a low profile, paid for everything as usual, and refrained from initiating any action until the hearing. Now, all that was left was to be patient and hope for the best. After the bizarre and cringeworthy negotiation session, things took an unexpected turn. My soon-to-be ex-wife, fueled by her misguided belief that she could control the divorce process, had eagerly signed the agreement for a lump sum payment of $60,000. Little did she know that her lack of legal representation and hasty decision-making would lead to her downfall. As soon as the ink dried on the agreement, my lawyer swiftly initiated the necessary legal procedures. The hearing with the judge took place sooner than expected, and the judge approved the divorce settlement. My wife was left with only the agreed-upon lump sum, and the rest of our assets were securely in my possession. Unfortunately, the rapidity of the legal proceedings caught my soon-to-be ex-wife off guard. With no time to secure alternative living arrangements, she found herself without a home. The lump sum she had received was quickly depleted as she spent it recklessly on extravagant outings with her friends, who were more than willing to enjoy the windfall. However, the illusion of camaraderie among her friends quickly shattered. With no more financial benefit to gain from her, they dumped her unceremoniously. She had a few flings with other men, who were more than happy to play Chad and Tyrone and use only for their pump and dump sessions. Homeless, penniless, and abandoned by the friends she thought were her allies, my soon-to-be ex-wife faced the harsh reality of her choices. In a desperate attempt to salvage some semblance of control and dignity, my now ex-wife decided to make a comeback. Fueled by pride or perhaps a misguided sense of entitlement, she reached out, hoping for a reconciliation or, at the very least, a reconsideration of the divorce terms. However, her efforts were met with a resounding rejection, and the response she received was nothing short of brutal. I asked her if her research in the types of penises has been concluded. I also added by saying that if the research is complete, she can start a new profession and earn some money. The words used to rebuff her were harsh and unapologetic, reflecting the deep wounds caused by her actions. The rejection made it clear that there was no room for negotiation, and any hope of salvaging the relationship had long evaporated. In the aftermath of the tumultuous divorce proceedings, I found solace in rebuilding my life and creating a positive environment for myself and my children. The divorce, though challenging, became a catalyst for personal growth and newfound strength. With full custody of my kids, I immersed myself in creating a stable and loving home. Professional help was sought to support both myself and the children through the emotional aftermath of the divorce. Together, we navigated the healing process, fostering open communication and understanding. 
As time passed, wounds began to heal, and life took on a brighter hue. I focused on my career, personal development, and nurturing meaningful connections. The support of friends and family played a crucial role in this journey, providing a strong foundation for the fresh start we all deserved. Meanwhile, my ex-wife, having faced the consequences of her choices, embarked on her own path of self-discovery. The rejection from her friends and the realization of her actions prompted a period of reflection. In time, she sought the necessary help to address underlying issues and rebuild her life. Surrounded by positivity and a newfound sense of independence, both of us managed to forge ahead separately. Eventually, we reached a point of mutual respect and understanding. Co-parenting, once a source of tension, evolved into a collaborative effort focused on the well-being of our children. The story concludes with a sense of closure and the assurance that, despite the challenges, happiness and fulfillment were attainable. Each of us found our own paths to happiness, and the journey, though difficult, ultimately led to a brighter and more promising future for everyone involved. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.